Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Assistant Public Safety Director Rufus Jackson, and I want to thank you all for joining us here today to gather, to honor, and remember our brothers, Captain Wayne Bear Brooks and Captain Augusto Augie Akabo, who made the ultimate sacrifice. Could you all rise for the presentation of the colors, followed by a Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic, which is saying, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, and justice for all. Order up! It is with heavy heart that we honor the memory today it is with heavy heart that we honor their memory here today. We are internally in debt to their service and their sacrifice. These two fire division members truly exemplify the value, the honor, the bravery, and the dedication, and their legacy will forever inspire us. I wanna thank the families of the fallen brothers, Captain Wayne Brooks, Captain Augusto Akabu, excuse me. And I also want to thank Mayor Roz Baraka, okay, and the business administrator, city council. We have Lawrence Crump, at large councilman. We have Louis Quintana, at large council. We have Louis Scott Roundtree, at large councilwoman. And also Mike Silver, our East Ward council. And if I miss any other dignitaries, please don't blame their heart. This is it's the mind. Um, but I make every I will make every attempt to identify or to acknowledge you all. At this time, I would like to ask Pastor Pablo to lead us in prayer. Detail on cover. Good morning to the families. Captains Augusto Akabu and Captains Wayne Brooks Jr., our hearts are with you. We want to say a prayer for you and your families and all that are here today. First and foremost, I want you to know that many times people will say when you work for the city or when you work for any entity in the city, they'll say you're just a replacement. Well, they'll move on without you. But it's clearly evident that Newark's not doing that today. Newark wants to mourn with those that mourn and grieve with those that grieve. After it's all said and done, the Bible says in the book of Revelations, the last book of the Bible, chapter 21 and verse 4 says, He, God, will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. There's more for us. So today I offer this prayer in memorial of these two wonderful men that gave up their lives. Would you join me in saying this prayer by closing your eyes, bowing your heads, and let's pray. Oh, gracious God, we thank you. We'll give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, even in the midst of our sufferings and in the midst of our tears. But in this moment, we are here to memorialize, to celebrate the lives of valiant men who worked for this city, worked for their families, and believed in giving up their lives for others. And so today, we pray that you would comfort our families. We pray that you would comfort those that work with them. We pray 
that your Holy Spirit will rest upon this place. We pray, O oh God, for our city officials. We pray for this city. We pray for those colleagues that were left behind and family members that were left behind. We pray the peace that surpasses all understanding. And Lord, we promise you to give you the glory and the honor. We will never forget these two remarkable individuals. We will keep their memory alive. We will never move on just for the sake of moving on. We will always continue to say, here were two good men that work for this city. And so Lord, help us through this moment. We'll give you the glory and the honor. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen and amen. God bless you all. Detail, read, cover. Thank you, Pastor. The loss of fallen heroes is immeasurable. Today we remember Captain Wayne Brooks and Captain Augusto Alcabo, who saved, who served our community with unwavering dedication and courage. This one year anniversary memorial is a testament to their endurance, legacy, formed by adversity, and by their commitment to protect and serve. At this time, I would like to invite our, our leader of this city, the leader of this great city, Mayor Roz Baraka, to share his remarks. Good morning. Today, while well, it's a great occasion because we are going to literally etch in stone the names and memory of Captain Ockable and Captain Brooks here uh, forever. Based on something that was put together a while ago by previous Mayor James and uh, the former fire director and the municipal council did at the time. Uh, the police had a monument for some time and they decided, rightfully so, to add firemen who lose their lives in the line of duty. One thing we get wrong is we say that these guys worked for the city. The city is just an institution. It's just a building just the incorporated status given to us to be able to govern day to day. Firemen and police officers and the folks in this building, they don't work for the city, they work for the people, and they do God's work every day. Every opportunity they get to get up in the morning and put their life at risk for other people, that's not the city's work, that's God's work. And so we appreciate that. deeply and dearly and so this is probably the least that we could do is etch their names in stone so that forever when people walk by they can see the people at least see their names of the individuals and maybe they ask somebody one day who these people were uh, their names etched in stone and that they gave the ultimate sacrifice uh, so that other people may live uh, no matter what they did the night before or that morning that they got up they did not know that this was actually going to happen. And we want to remember that. Not just the, the fate of it, we want to remember them as individuals, as human beings, uh, as folks, as our friends, as our husbands, as our fathers, our brothers, who lived with us, who worked with us, who made us laugh, who made us cry, who worked every single day uh, to ensure that other people's lives uh, were fulfilled. And so we appreciate them and we want to be able to, to, to do that here today. And I think this does that in a, in a very small way. Uh, so we appreciate and, and, and uh, just want to say over and over again, we appreciate and the condolences to, to the family, to the families over and over, not just the immediate family, but to the fire uh, service, the family of firemen and firewomen who live with these guys every single day uh, as well. Uh, we, we wish you your, our condolences and we mourn whether people understand that or think that we mourn just as you mourn. Every day that I wake up, I have to wear everything that happens in this city. I have to wear it like a coat 
like a, a hat, a finely uh, fit uniform. Whether it fits me, whether I purchased it or not, I wear it every day. I wear the good and I wear the bad. And I don't complain about it because that's the job we chose. This is what we do. And so on days when we're rejoicing, I get to rejoice with you. And days when we are mourning, I have to mourn with you. And days when we're building, I have to build with you. And days when we are pulling things down, I have to pull things down with you. And my shoulders are big enough, uh, by the grace of God, to deal whatever it is that we need to deal with to make sure that we all get through this horrible and tragic event. And that somehow we find solace and comfort in each other's arms, in each other's prayers, and in God's canopy that rests and protects all of us. God speed to you, God bless you, and God bless the family here today. Thank you, thank you, man. I now invite our Public Safety Director, Fritz Fraget. Good morning. Good morning, family. Good morning. Let me start off by saying that's why I say good morning, family, because truly, truly, being the police and the fire department, they were celebrating fire. We are a family. Uh, first, let me give you thanks to this event today. Uh, all the events that we have would not be possible without the support of the city uh, that finds the means to make these events happen. From Mayor Ross J. Baraka to B.A. Pennington to the council members sitting in the back. We've got uh, Councilman Silva, Councilman Crump, uh, Gonzalez, uh, Councilwoman Roundtree. They truly support every endeavor that we've requested in, in uh, fire and policing. That means to say today is, uh, today when I woke up this morning, uh, and we don't do this enough. I woke up this morning and when I woke up and, and got dressed and came to work, God decided to breathe life into me and give me another day to be here. On that tra tragic day, uh, those, those two men, Captain Brooks and, and Captain Ackerman, woke up that morning and that day they did not go home. Which is really puts it in the light that all the firefighters out there and, and, and that work hard, that when they show up that morning to work, they don't know what the day will bring what event they have to go to. But yet, if you are called and chosen to do this job, and they're here doing this job. Today we're here to celebrate the legacy of these two men, uh, Captain Akapu and Captain Brooks. Uh, I can remember during the ceremony last year at the services, uh, there was a coach that got up there on the stand and talked about um, Captain Akapu, and he, was, he, he is a Newark native, went to high school in Newark, and he was on the football team, and uh, that coach had said that he stayed every day after practice to clean the weight room, I believe, right? And in that, that just shows the character of that person to stay and do that. And then after that, he was dealing with cancer, I believe. And he would show up out of the 30 to 50 people on the football program, he saw in himself to show up and support his coach and to be there for him and bring him lunch. That just goes to show the character of this person even prior to becoming a firefighter. And with Captain, uh, Captain Brooks, who they would call the bear, uh, gentle giant. Most guys that are big are usually gentle. He is that gentle giant. You know someone cares when they invite the entire department into their home to share with them. Right? I see his wife smiling right now. That was, that was his MO. He embraced the entire fire community, firefighters to support them cooked for them, guided them. These are two inspirational leaders, heroes that should never be forgot, forgotten. And that legacy, legacy has been etched in stone due to the support of the mayor and the city council and putting his name here that will last forever within the city. I can tell you firsthand from myself, I appreciate all the hard work. Public service is hard in all aspects. And, and the energy, the support and the effort, this is a family. Police, fire, OEM, and the city. We are the city, the city is us. We have to embrace each other, support each other. Uh, uh, Captain Akabu's family and Captain Brooks' family, we love you. Thank you for giving us your children for those years to keep this city safe. We appreciate you and God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Director. And I want to invite uh, our fire chief, 
Dale Ortiz, you say a couple of words. Good morning, family, friends, and distinguished guests. Today we gather to honor and remember two extraordinary individuals who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to others. On this solemn anniversary of their passing, we pay tribute to our fallen firefighters who exemplified courage, selflessness, and unwavering dedication. Each of these brave souls answered the call to duty never hesitating to put themselves in harm's way to protect our community. They embodied the true spirit of honored profession, displaying remarkable strength and resilience in the face of danger. Their actions have left an indelible mark on our department and have touched the lives of countless individuals and communities. The fallen we honor here today would probably have said that they were just ordinary. That's the humility those two individuals embodied. But today, both Augie and Wayne, we honor you as extraordinary individuals, true heroes without exception. And this memorial forever etches your legacy for the generation of firefighters who join our broader profession. This memorial also pays tribute to the names who did not appear on this monument. It pays tribute to the families who stand alongside us in our toughest moments. And because the Brotherhood of Firefighting doesn't stop at the firehouse door, you are our family too. United by an unbreakable bond built by strength and sacrifice. And as this monument continues to honor your loved ones, we hold them and you in our hearts forever. Augie and Wayne, your absence is deeply felt. And every time a call comes in and the firehouse doors go up and we go out, your memory will ride with us. As we reflect on your courage, we're inspired to carry on your dignity, honoring your unwavering commitment. And we vow to ensure that your sacrifice is never forgotten. Thank you. We definitely want to hear from our union. Thank you. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug, uh, fire chief. I now want to bring the union president, the officer's union president, uh, Tommy Shea. Uh, good morning. I'll be brief. I uh, want to thank everyone for coming today to honor our fallen heroes. Um, they're, uh, they're being honored for the job they did and for their bravery and the tragic circumstances. But I hope uh, at some point today we can all remember them for how they lived and the uh, beautiful people they were, how they made us laugh. And uh, please keep the families and the fire family in your prayers. There are many in mourning. Uh, and this is not going to be over anytime soon. So uh, remember us, remember them fondly, and uh, God bless. Thank you. Thank you, sir. At this time, I want to bring up the Vice President of the Newark Firefighters Union, Eddie Pollard. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. We start by saying, uh, I could really go some time without hearing the burn, 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 burn. I'm only kidding. The name of that song is Taps in our pipe and band drum. Give them a nice big round of applause. They do a beautiful job of that. And that's actually has been the soundtrack this past year, this past year that we're dealing with this tragedy. We're talking about it's been a year. It's been a year that mothers lost their son, wife lost their husband, girlfriend lost their significant other, brothers lost their brother, daughters lost their husband, uh, father. And the fire department lost two brothers. And in that year, you start wondering, as you go through the emotions, you start wondering, why, why, what if? You start questioning people, we start having arguments with each other. 
going to the grief process so difficult when you lose somebody that's you lose two heroes that were the epitome of like beautiful two human beings they were like truly awesome human beings you start questioning you start questioning your faith god how do you let this happen how do you let this happen so you start wondering how do you go forward how do you get past this a year later as you can see the emotion in everybody in the family even firefighters how we're still crushed we're broken our hearts are destroyed how do you move forward you move forward by not letting them die in vain not letting them be forgotten honoring and respecting them every time their name comes up And you honor them by not letting this happen again, by doing your best for it not to happen again. And I gotta tell you, recently I met with the Honorable Roz J. Barak, our mayor, and I addressed a handful of concerns. While I was waiting in, the, in his room, uh, in his waiting room, there's a sign that, on the wall that said, lead from the back and let the ones in the front feel like they're in charge. Well, I went into that meeting, I trust a handful of things, but the one I said to him that was the most, that comes out the most notable, he said, Mayor, we can't ride short staff like we're continuing to ride. Mayor, please. The mayor at that time didn't say, Eddie, we're gonna take care of this, we're gonna make it. But I could see the look in his eyes that he was going to go look forward. I knew something was coming out of that just by the look in his eyes. That next day, he implemented for the first time in Newark history. No engine company, no ladder company will ever ride less than one in three. Mayor, thank you, thank you, thank you. From the bottom of my heart, from the firefighters that are here, that was so profound for us. Why that's so big is because that's gonna make a big difference. That's gonna honor their legacy. That's gonna make firefighting safer. That gives us comfort knowing the powers that be realize they needed to step in and help us out. And they did, they did, and we're so proud of it and we're so grateful for it to the families we're gonna be here celebrating them forever. Every opportunity we get, count on us. Have strength in these difficult days. God bless the Newark Fire Department. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, so in 1998, the union president, Dave Giordano, had a vision of placing a monument on Green Street. This monument is a symbol of power, culture, identity, and remembrance. Of all the firefighters who have passed away during their line of duty, through many trials and tribulations, and with the help of the then mayor, Sharp James, city council, I believe there's one councilman out there that, that was around during this period, the engineering department, an honorable thought became a reality in 2020, in 2001. 23 years ago, this beautiful black granite stone was imported for South Africa and it was placed here. Today and every day, we honor the memories of each firefighter whose name is engraved on this stone behind me. May their spirits live on in each of our hearts. The monument will be unveiled today. It stands not only for a symbol of remembrance, but also for a testament to the courage, the selflessness of those we have lost. As we unveil this monument, let us also renew our commitment to supporting the families, the colleagues, and the fallen heroes. Their loss is immeasurable, and it is our duty to ensure that they are never, 
never forgotten. Let us hold a moment of silence and remembrance of each and every firefighter who paid the ultimate sacrifice while protecting this community. So shortly, you will hear the sounds of bell tones, the tradition sound, the tradition of sound of the bell tones, dates back in the early days of firefighting. In the past, before modern communication devices, bells were used to communicate important messages to the firefighters. When a firefighter died in a lot of duty, the tolling of the bells was used as an alert to all members of the department. Today. The tradition of sounding the bells is a solemn, reverent, reverent way of recognizing the sacrifice and the service of those who have given their lives to protect others. Each ring of the bell symbolizes a firefighter's dedication, bravery, and selflessness in the act of danger. Detail, let's in. May this moment stand as a lasting tribute of fallen heroes and as a reminder of their unwavering devotion to duty. We will continue to honor their memory by striving to uphold the standards of excellent, excellence and courage that is embedded, embodied, excuse me. At this time, I ask Pastor Pablo to lead us in prayer. So today we pray the prayer that the Lord Moses gave the people of God, and that is in Numbers 622. And we say, the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord make his face turn toward you and give you peace. Father, we pray for the peace of the family members, of our city, of our heroes, those that work for the people. We thank you for them. And we pray that your presence shine upon them today and forevermore. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. God bless you. Detail read. Cover. Thank you, Pastor. At this time, I would like to offer a special thanks to the following participants and that made this possible. The Fire Officers Union, the Firefighters Union, 
the Newark Honor Guard, both police and fire. The Pipe and Drum Band, I'm Newark. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. The Bell of Sirens, who has refreshments here for all who want any drinks or anything. They, they, have, uh, they have drinks available for us all. The Newark Police Division, Community Relations, and all the members of the Fire Division. Thank you. This concludes the ceremony. Thank you all for coming out and making this a special day.